What's going on guys? My name is Mark Wagner and today I'm going to be sharing a complete checklist of all the things that you need to do before launching your Shopify store. I highly recommend that you like this video, save this video, do whatever you got to do so that you can come back to it and just make sure that you're doing all of these steps. So let's go ahead and get right into the value. All right, so this video is going to be split up into four sections and basically that's just like, um, you know, four different types of things that you need to check on and, you know, make sure that you do before launching your Shopify store. So the first section is website improvements and we're just going to start that out with the most basic one that a lot of people don't do and I didn't do when I first started, um, which is buying a custom domain name. These literally cost like $12 a year from GoDaddy and they're even cheaper on Namecheap So um, I would recommend that you definitely buy a domain name as far as Namecheap versus GoDaddy I personally prefer GoDaddy just because it's easier to set up and it has a couple other advantages But like I said Namecheap is cheaper um, So if you're on a budget then go with them Alright, so the next part is writing product descriptions that don't suck because you can't just launch your Shopify store with the default overload descriptions and expect to make any sales. Um, it's just not going to work out. So you really got to work on your product description skills. And um, I do have a video that teaches you basically the exact like layout that I use. So um, you can check that out and it is somewhere above my head right now. So another improvement that you need to make on your website before launching it is making sure that you have product reviews. Now, there's a lot of different ways that you can do this. Probably the most basic is to just give like Ali reviews. Um, that way you can just import a bunch of reviews straight from AliExpress. Um, but it's not the best because a lot of those reviews, if you've ever read them, it's like product came in 25 days to Russia good seller or something like that you know it's just not like it, it would look really really weird from a customer's perspective so personally i use a reviews app called looks and that's spelled l-o-o-x and it's like a photo review app so you can get reviews from aliexpress but i don't believe you can do that with like the ten dollar plan um so what i do is i go to amazon and i find the same exact product and I get all the pictures and everything and I just copy and paste the descriptions over to my looks app. So um, it takes a little bit of time, but it, it can really, really help increase your conversion rate. So another thing that your website needs to have is firm guarantees. Now this is a double sided sword in a good way. Um, because if a customer asks you for a refund, like people will ask you for refunds for the dumbest things. Like I'm telling you, they'll be like, my cat ate it, can I have my money back? Like, what? Um, so you really need to have a, like a, a well-written return and refund policy. And um, you also really wanna add some pages with like frequently asked questions or maybe like shipping information and stuff like that. Because when people are on a new site, then they're gonna be looking around to make sure that they're protected in case like, you know, your website sucks. So another small improvement that you can make on your website is removing the power by Shopify that's on the bottom. So I don't know if you know what I'm talking about, but if you scroll all the way to the bottom of like a normal Shopify store, then you'll just see a little thing that says power by Shopify. Now it's not a huge deal if you leave it up, but you can remove it in like two to three minutes. So um, I would do that just to make it look a little bit more professional. You can just YouTube or Google a tutorial of how to remove that. All right, so moving on to the next category, that is your website backend. And that sounds kind of scary, but it's really not. So um, the number one thing here is making sure that your Facebook pixel is installed and working. Now, even if you're not gonna be using Facebook ads to start off with, you may want to eventually. So you really need to have your Facebook pixel on your website and it needs to be working and just collecting data. You also need to make sure that you've upgraded to the Shopify basic plan, which is $29 a month and remove the default password protection because if you don't upgrade, then you're not going to be able to get any sales. And there's going to be like, if people type in your website name or they click on an ad or something like that, it's going to take them to a screen that like asks for a password to access your website. That's just, 
how they do it and even when you do upgrade and get a plan um that password page is still going to be there so you do need to upgrade and you do need to remove that password page. All right, so the last part of fixing your website backend is to double check all of your payment info. So now I would recommend that you use Shopify payments and PayPal if you can. Um, if you can't, then you can always use like Stripe or you know something like that to check out whatever is available for you. Now, um, you can also use Amazon Pay, which I would recommend, but it's not a huge deal if you don't have it. The next section is branding. Now, you don't need to go crazy with branding, and it's not a huge deal when you're first starting out. However, you should at least put in a little bit of effort so that you look like a trustworthy company. This includes stuff like making a Facebook and an Instagram, especially if you're going to be using either of those for advertising. Part of making those profiles is just posting a little bit. You don't have to post every day, although you it's recommended, but um, it post at least nine times on Instagram and at least three times on Facebook. Basically, that just makes it so if anyone happens to click on your profile, then it just it doesn't look scammy. And make sure that you're posting things that's congruent with your brand. Now you can post products, but really wouldn't recommend posting like white background photos of your products. Um, so maybe just pictures of your product being used, or let's say if you're in the dog niche, post some pictures of dogs and stuff that's congruent with their brand. All right, so another part of this is making a business email. Now, personally, all my stores have like a custom email. So it's like contact at mywebsite.com. But when you're first starting out, you're good with just a Gmail, especially if you're on a low budget. So the next step for branding is getting a professional logo done. Now, logos can be really, really big because that's something that people always see on your website. And if it looks like trash, then people aren't going to have a good image of you in their head and they probably won't even trust you. So you can make a logo yourself. That's what I did because I was too broke to even spend the $5 that it costs on Fiverr. So, um, yeah, I made mine on... Um, I want to say it was a website called Gravit and um, I've also made them on Canva and if you're on a low budget then you don't have this probably but you can also make really really good logos on Adobe Illustrator. Like I said you can also hire someone on Fiverr to make it for you. Um, this ranges um, it's really anywhere from five to thirty dollars depending on what you're looking for. Now in my earlier days I've even like used stock photos that I found on Google Images for like a temporary logo, but that's definitely not something I would recommend because you can run into copyright issues with that, but you gotta do what you gotta do. All right, so the last step and one of the most important is to double check. Now, um, there's a lot of things that go into double checking, I guess, but um, one of the biggest and most beneficial ones is to get some store reviews um, because well, there's always things that you miss when you're looking at your own store. That can mean even like asking your parents or your friends or your family or anyone to look over your store and, you know, just see their opinions of it and what they would change. Now, it's even better if you have someone who's experienced with e-commerce look at your store. I'm happy to look at stores, but um, it's not my full-time job. You can always send me a DM on Instagram and I'll try to look at your store if I get some time. You can also post your store to Facebook groups that revolve around e-commerce and ask for reviews. Now, some groups don't allow this, but the majority of them do. Another thing that you need to do is check your store on multiple layouts. That means um, check from your laptop, check from your phone, check from different like computers and stuff like that, because you'll be really surprised how much it changes. And although you have your theme editor where you can like preview like different stuff, it's not always 100% accurate. So you really got to check on different devices. The last step is going through your checkout process. Now, I always, always, always do this. Um, I don't ask for store reviews or do anything like that anymore, but I always go through my checkout process. This is super important. So um, basically, that just means you put yourself in your customer's shoes. Um, so if you're sending people to your homepage, then you would go to your homepage. Then you would click the product that you're promoting then you would add it to your cart and fill all your information and just go through everything until the point where you like submit your order. 
Um, technically, you can submit your order because you can do a draft order, but you really don't have to because at that point you're done with like the whole checkout process. I find issues a lot of the time when I'm doing this. So it's super important that beginners and really everyone else do this step. All right guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video and I hope that I was able to significantly help you with launching your Shopify store. Props to you if you're watching this because that probably means you're a beginner, so I respect the hustle. Be sure to hit that big old subscribe button on your way out and I'll see you in the next one.